right. I am so excited to have Rebecca Bridges with us from the Coffee Club to chat about working and homeschooling. So Rebecca, can you share a little bit about yourself, introduce yourself to our watchers? Of course. Well, thank you, Jen. I'm so happy to be here chatting with you. Uh, so I am Rebecca. I am a mom of two boys. They are nine and four. And I've had a, a varied career. Um, my degree is in my, well, my undergrad is in music, but I don't really, um, I didn't end up having a career in music. You just never know where life is going to take you. And that's the funny thing, right? Like who knew we'd be homeschooling or I didn't know. <laughs> um, so I, um, I moved out to the Washington DC area after college, which is where I live now. Um, and I started out in uh, working for a nonprofit. And then I, uh, while I was there, I got my master's degree. And then I um, worked in consulting with a lot of different organizations, like federal, a lot of federal government um, and some private sector clients too. Um, did a lot of really interesting work there. And then I moved into the IT sector um, as a senior project and relationship manager. Um, and about a year ago, I actually had the privilege of walking away from my career for a while, uh, my paid job, uh, to be with my kids um, full time, although I keep myself busy with obviously the kids and life stuff. But then I do quite a bit of volunteer work, including uh, some that's related to my professional, uh, to my professional life. So. I love that. I love that you brought out that, you know, you were working for a very long time and now you do volunteer work because I find some people forget that it's called volunteer work. It's still work. <laughs> yes. And I know because I meet with you quite often that you do quite a lot of work, um, yes. for volunteering and it brings you a lot of joy. So I'm glad that you're doing that. All right. So we're going to backtrack just a little bit. Do you want to tell us how you got started on your homeschool journey? Like what made you decide to homeschool your boys? Uh -huh, yes. So that is a great question. So when we had my older son was in kindergarten when COVID hit. And so we are, I guess, what you'd call COVID homeschoolers. <laughs> um, and we at the time, so I, my husband and I are both blind. Our children are sighted. Um, and the reason that that's important in this context is that um, the school that our son went to used an app quite a bit for, you know, the looking at the kids' work and, you know, different, you know, communicating with parents, um, you know, those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And, um, it was problematic for both of us mm -hmm. to access information in the app. And so we could live with it when, you know, to some degree when he was in school, but then when they closed everything down three quarters of the way through the school year, um, then we figured out, okay, they're going to be using this app more and leaning on it as they move to a virtual model uh, of school. And, so that was the initial reason that we decided to homeschool because we were essentially totally locked out of our child's education at the time. And so we knew it wasn't going to be good. And we actually tried uh, going the advocacy route. We reached out to our principal first and she directed us. She was kind enough to help us get to all the way up to the district level to the superintendent about our concerns about the application. And they wouldn't speak to us and we actually had to get a lawyer and it got weird. Uh, but the point is, you know, there's always that that thing that that one like maybe there's one reason you decide to homeschool. It isn't the same reason now um, yes. we but that was sort of, you know, a lady at our church was like, hey, have you ever thought about homeschooling? And I'm like, ha, ah, that's so funny. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, your kid, it's, you know, he's going into first grade. It's like an hour a day or less. And that's it. And I'm like, for real? Like, because we were looking at, you know, sitting, you know, five hours of virtual school mm -hmm. or whatever kind of ridiculousness. Right. And um, so that was the reason, the initial reason that we decided to homeschool. 
Yeah. That's crazy. I, I always feel so like, so, so empathetic for the parents who were schooling at home during COVID because I know, you know, they were like, I'm homeschooling now. And I was like, yes. And no, <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's much like, and you know, I try not to get hung up on terminology because I realize, like in some instances, yes, it's important, but in others not because, you know, they really felt like they were homeschooling, but I was like, the difference is when you homeschool you have control. Yes. You know, you're not plugging in to five, six hours. And, you know, I have friends that have four or five kids and they had all, yeah. I swear it was another full-time job, keeping their kids logged in and connected. And it was just, I, my heart just oh. breaks for those that like tried that route and felt like homeschooling was too much. Cause I was like, yeah, yeah that's you're learning really at home. It, yeah. That's not <laughs> what it looks like. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> So my next question was, do you have any like family members or mentors that really inspired you to homeschool while you were working? No, uh, not family members. <laughs> <laughs> um, they sort of went in kicking and screaming a little bit uh, okay. when we decided to homeschool. Um, you know, everybody gets very, there's always varied reactions, right? Like, oh, your kids are going to turn out like Neanderthals. I mean, who, <laughs> you know, like, oh, how will your children be socialized? Which is just such a funny question now, because I think I had the same question when mm -hmm. I started, right? But it's so dumb now, like, because it's ridiculous, because these kids are socialized and uh, in a lot of different ways. I won't go down that rabbit hole. Um, to be honest, and I know I'm speaking to you, but, and, you know, but you have made such an impact on me and really been a huge champion of, of me and other homeschooling working families and moms specifically. Um, so you're one because I didn't know, I had no idea that this was possible to do this. I thought that if you homeschool, you're, you're a stay at home parent. Mm -hmm. um, everybody I knew at the time, you know, before I homeschooled, was a stay-at-home parent. The few, you know, the people at our church who homeschooled, they were stay-at-home moms, right? Um, I didn't know it was possible. And somebody said, hey, check out this, you know, working homeschool mom club on Facebook. And I found you and it was just huge. Like it made such a difference, you know, talking with you and other working parents um, and just getting, getting into that network and getting plugged in was really inspiring and just such a relief to know that, you know, and a comfort to know that we can do it. It's, it's totally doable. I mean, it's, you've been a big help. And also there've been other, uh, you know, well-known people out there that I've checked out that I've, I've appreciated, you know, in the homeschooling community, like Pam Barnhill and others who've been, that I've learned a lot from over time. Yes. Okay. So thank you for sharing that. I, I love finding out how people find me. It's always interesting to see like where they where did they come from? How did they find me? Um, so that's exciting. Plus, you've been a member of our coffee club membership, so the Working Homeschool Mom Coffee Club membership, for a while as well. Yes, and that is our smaller group on Facebook. It's our membership. So, how would you say that that smaller group has helped you? So I love the coffee club because. Um, First of all, the plethora of resources that you've taken the time to curate and, you know, put up there for us, you know, trail awards, bucket lists, whatever, like they're all there. Like, oh, looking for something to do with your kids? It's there. I mean, meal planning, it's there. All the things like there's so many great resources. And man, when I was starting out, I was so hungry for all of those things. I wanted all the things. Right. How do I how do I make this all work? And you have so many wonderful resources there. Um, I also appreciate the coffee club because a lot of the groups on Facebook, they're pretty large, right? And so um, it's nice to have a smaller group of people that you can go to to ask questions and get you know more targeted feedback and responses. People who are in the trenches with you, not just homeschooling people, but working homeschooling people. Um, and not only that, but I think, you know, people who take the time to join something like the coffee club really appreciate, you know, its value and, and they contribute also. So the conversations we have in the, in the group and the Q and A's, I think are really helpful that you do and the, the quarterly workshops. And I love, I love the flexibility that, you know, you can participate in them or you can watch them later. There's always something like a little nugget that I take away every time I see someone's post on Facebook in the, in the coffee club, 
or, you know, take part or listen later to a session that you have. It's just, it's nice to, to be able to have a smaller group of, you know, homeschoolers to, to connect with and get ideas from. Oh, good. I'm glad. Okay. So with that in mind, was there a moment where, so we kind of talked about like when you first started working in homeschooling and how like some people are on board and some people aren't, and we both know everyone always has an opinion and they like to share it, whether you ask for it or not. (laughs) But was there a moment where you were like, yes, I can actually do this? Yes, I think, I think it was, gosh, I've had a few, um, But I think the first one was once I figured out like how, because part of it, that first, you know, that first year, Mm -hmm. right. You're, you're figuring out what a routine is. You're trying to do, you know, replicate school at home, which is terrible, right? Like, oh, we're going to read at nine and we're going to have math at nine 15, whatever. Ridiculous. Right. Like you, you make all the mistakes, you buy all the curriculum that your child hates and that you hate. <laughs> yes. right? I did all those things. Um, you push your child so hard, like, no, keep going. Keep going. You got to you got to do this for like three hours. No, um, I did all those things. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the moment that I realized I could do this was when I ended up I found a curriculum that we both enjoyed and just watching you know, the light bulb go off in your kid's head, like knowing that just seeing those moments where your, your kid remembers something that you taught him, or, you know, I don't know that there was a specific, uh, you know, a specific moment, but, you know, when you're, it's just, it starts to become just a part of your daily life. It's parenting, Mm -hmm. right? I mean, who else teaches the kid how to, you know, your kid how to tie their shoes, or dress themselves, or, you know, and I know teaching math is a lot different than shoe tying, okay, Um, (laughs) but, but it's honestly, when you see your child learning, and you really understand that they're making progress, like for, for my son in particular, he was a struggling reader Mm -hmm. um, when he came home, he was, um, of course, he was a young five when he started kindergarten, he literally had a birthday and went to kindergarten, Um, And boys, you know, can take longer to mature. And so he was, you know, constantly, you know, school was a struggle, among other things, for him to just sit and be quiet, right? They, they, he hated doing that. Mm -hmm. Um, But reading was a big struggle for him. And just watching him, you know, sitting and listening to him, I think we were at, um, now it's coming back to me, we were at a, some grandparents house, um, and we brought a little book along that my son had been reading and he sat down and read it to his grandparents and it was awesome. Like it took <laughs> me, I mean, I, we had basically had to start from the ground up with reading mm-hmm. again. Um, and just how just listening to him read and read the words clearly and with, with nice inflection and just seeing that in that moment and sharing that with, with family was really really awesome. Oh, I love that. It's funny that you mentioned reading because that was actually the fear for me. You know, when I first started homeschooling, I thought, how am I going to teach a child to read? I have no idea how to get started. Right. And I mean, we're talking like 17 years ago. <laughs> so it was a while ago. Right. And when he read, that's when I was like, okay, I'm not a failure. I can figure this out. We can do this. But it was like up to that moment, I wasn't sure. And you're right. That first year, I always tell everyone your first year is all about learning what works and what doesn't and all the mistakes (laughs) because you're going to make them all. (laughs) Yes. So yeah, really great recap. I love that. Thank you for sharing that story. Okay. So uh, you've answered a few different questions that I had in mind. One of them I have though is, you know, as a working mom, so you worked at home with kids, what would you say that, like, what skill do you think that you developed during, you know, juggling them both has been the most valuable? Wow. That's a great question. It is. Ah, what skill? Um, I think 
for me, it's been the ability to block things out, Ooh, to block out distraction. Yes. Because you need to do that. When I'm focusing on work, I need to block everything else out. Mm -hmm. When I am focusing on my child, you know, put the phone away, go away from the computer, just mm -hmm. sit down and do it. Because when I'm distracted, my work isn't good and my son is not focused, whatever, my children are not focused. So I think it's the ability to really just focus. And I think in today's society where there's constantly everything, you know, all the noise, all the things, all the devices, buzz, 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 you know, everything is happening. The ability to tune it out and to be very intentional about what you are doing in that moment and to be present in that moment is a skill that is incredibly difficult. It's a lot harder than it looks on the surface, I think. And so for me, I think that's the skill that I really, I had to work on the most. And I think it's probably the one that, that I really, you need to be good at that to do yes. this. Yeah, I agree. Yes. Especially working at home because you're not stepping into an office. You're still surrounded by the kids in the house and all the things that need your attention. So I love that. Okay. So what advice would you give others who are considering this journey of working and homeschooling at the same time? Um, so I think, the, I mean, the first thing I would say is that you can do it no matter what anyone says. Um, it is doable. Uh, the other thing though, is you can't always do everything at the same time. Okay. So don't try to, you know, eat the whole elephant as they say, or whatever, right? Like one thing at a time. So, and I think it's, it's similar to a, just a new homeschooler period where, you know, figure out what a routine looks like. Like what, what are the things that you need to get done today? Okay, not the things you want to get done. What are the absolute must do's? And really looking at those first to figure out how to structure, you know, how to structure your day. Mm -hmm. Like all the nice to haves, put those away for now. Yes. You know, and just focus on nuts and bolts. Like this is what I need to do. So I have these meetings. Um, I want to make sure we get to language arts and math, you know, and a little bit of whatever, reading or something or, you know, history two days a week, whatever, if you want. Um, you know, you're not the, I think just focusing on the, those things first, the I need, you know, we need to make sure that we do these things. And, you know, don't try, homeschooling is not going to look the same for a working parent as it works, as it does for a non-working parent. Yes. You just don't have the the flexibility sometimes that you might wish you had. And so, and that's the other thing, don't wish your day away, right? Like look at what you actually have, look at your own reality and your own situation. Your homeschool will never look like and should never look like someone else's homeschool. Um, and I think for me, that was very freeing, just knowing that, you know, I don't have to do school at 10, 10 a.m. if I don't, if it doesn't work with my schedule. We can do it in the evening. We can do it at the park. We can do it on a Saturday, um, which, by the way, my kid is not a fan of. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, just figuring out that it doesn't, you know, you're not going to be able to do all the things all the time. Like we were not able to join a uh, a co-op, the co-op that I wanted when we first started because it was, you know, the parents have to be there and have to teach. In, in that particular co-op but there are some you know I found an outdoor survival skills program that I could drop him off at one day a week for five hours um, and so that was something that that was helpful and so I think it's just understanding your own needs and your own limitations too is really important mm -hmm. I love that I love that Okay, so you've chatted a bit about how the Working Homeschool Mom Coffee Club membership helped you during your working homeschool journey. Uh, what would you tell others, you know, that have heard us talking about this, say, in other places, they've heard me talking about the membership, they've heard about other people, what would you tell them that were kind of thinking about joining or not? Well, again, I mean, there are a plethora of resources available right at your fingertips 
Um, you know, everyone in there is so encouraging. I mean, if you're looking for a group of people who, you know, really, you know, they love what they do um, and can be an encouragement um, and have experience, then it's a great it's a great spot to be. It's my favorite. Actually, actually, my favorite is the Harmony Hub, but I'll get to that in a minute. Um, okay. But in terms of if you're wanting something that you can kind of that you have the flexibility to, you know, leverage when you need it, like all those things, just to because at first, sometimes all those resources, it's like when you get a new job, and they point you to all the orientation materials. And you're like, okay and you read them all you're like that was nice but then later you you figure out okay what are the things i actually need and then you can go back and really you know call through those things and find the specific thing that meets your need and you know tells you how to do what you need to do right and i think the coffee club is a lot like that that there is so much information in available to you uh, but it's a great resource for when you kind of you need to sort of you're looking for something in particular <laughs> And it, there's a go-to group and a go-to web page that you can find all the things that you need. And it's unique to other homeschooling communities out there because of the working component. I mean, there are people in the coffee club that have lots of kids and work and they do it. And it's amazing. And there are, you know, people who have their own businesses. There's people you know, who do all kinds of amazing things. And it's very, it's just inspiring to know that there are people out there doing what you're doing um, and that you can do it too. Okay. So you mentioned the Homeschool Harmony Hub, which for those of you that don't know, is another program that I run and that Rebecca is in. So what do you want to tell us about this? So I adore the Harmony Hub because um, it is, it's like having like a group of just like buddies right at your fingertips, right? There's, there's accountability. There's, you can share the highs, the lows, like we're pretty real in there, right? About, <laughs> and it's, it's a group of ladies. It's smaller than the coffee club, much smaller. And so, but we, we chat, we can talk to each other in Voxer, you know, audio messages, which is great. And just like, Hey, this is what's going on today. Or, what do you think about this? Or it's just, it's a group I've found so much encouragement and support and friendship through the Harmony Hub. And it is a worthwhile investment. It's like, I don't know. It's like, I, it's like you sort of, you're, we're busy people, right? So we don't have a lot of time sometimes to like go out and do all kinds of stuff with friends. But this is like a group of friends that I get to talk to every day, no matter how busy I am. Um, and I, I appreciate just being able to share the the highs, the lows, the this is what I need to do today. And we we share weekly goals. So there's accountability there and encouragement like, oh, did you, how did this go? And And you're always, you're so good about, you know, listening and providing you know, just being empathetic um, and providing advice when it's requested and not, you know, not when it's not right. Like just it's the ladies in the Harmony Hub have become friends. Like I truly believe that. And it's been just remarkable to to watch us, you know, to kind of watch those relationships grow and change. And like I love knowing what's going on with everybody's families and like it's just a great a group of people to to network with and share and draw support and encouragement from and be you know be accountable to you have a buddy who really like we're all in the trenches doing it and I think it's unique to the you know it's unique from the coffee club in that there I think the relationships are a little bit tighter um, and the connection is more frequent so um, that's one thing I appreciate. Like, I love it. Like when everybody goes on vacation in the Harmony Hub, I'm sad because I don't get to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> that's because when I go on vacation, I go where there's no internet. <laughs> so it doesn't work. Well, you shouldn't but... talk to us on vacation. Okay. But I, but I mean, <laughs> you ladies are, are so, you know, I, I, I do consider you friends and, you know, colleagues in a way. And it's just, it's a really, it's a worthwhile investment. And, you know, if anybody wants to learn more about it, um, from someone who's not the owner of it, 
um, I'm happy to share uh, my own experience personally. Uh, I love that. And I think that's so important. It's so, you know, I think if you're considering any type of program, coaching, especially speaking to the person who's running it is important. That's where you get like, this is how it works. But I think hearing from those actually in the program, because especially as working moms, and this has to do with like curriculum, anything, ask people who are using it because they will tell you, oh, this is what I don't like about it. This is what I do like about it. This is how it works. This is how it benefits me. There are so many times I wish I had had somebody to ask because I think I would have made less mistakes in that first year of homeschooling when I picked out curriculum. I was like, oh, Ugh. because the sales pages, you know, yeah, they're important, but sometimes you just, you don't really know how something works till you talk to somebody who's a working mom, who is homeschooling, who can say, oh, this was time intensive or actually, no, this was really easy. So yeah, I appreciate I mean, that offer. Thank you so much. Well, it's, I think too, like there are a lot of ways we can spend our time, mm -hmm. right? We're busy people. Um, but I have chosen to prioritize the Harmony Hub because I, I get so much from it just, you know, personally and otherwise, like, because it's just those meaningful relationships, the meaningful conversations, the, the sharing, the feedback. Um, it's been just a joy and a treat to be a part of it. Oh, well, thank you. And thank you so much for buying out this time to talk with us. Um, I love hearing the stories and getting to know more about you. We love hearing more about you. So thank you so much. Of course. Thanks for having me.